What's up guys, it's Rainad back, and this time I have the first update video for you on our brand new Bizarre YouTube channel. Make sure you sub, make sure you follow. This is going to be the place where we post any and all updates about the game moving forward, at least on YouTube. So the last time that you guys saw the game, it was a proper traditional deck builder, but in digital. That is the original concept of the game. It's what we started with. And the goal really for us was to make the best game that we could. So we started looking at different solutions for some of the problems we were finding with this traditional deck building setup that, you know, use a board kind of like this one that you guys are familiar with seeing in, you know, old update videos from last year. So traditional deck builder, for the most part, right? You have your deck, you have your discard pile, and then you have your hand of cards. So you start with a deck of cards, right? Every turn, you draw five of them. You play your cards to do stuff, get you money to buy more cards, attack, whatever. And then at the end of the turn, they go to your discard pile. And the next turn, you draw another five. And eventually, your deck runs out. You play all your cards. They're all in your discard pile. So you take your discard pile, you reshuffle it, and then you put the cards back in your deck and you keep drawing. And this is like the normal loop in a deck building game. And it's what we started with basically. So in this update video, I wanna to describe to you one of the biggest changes we made in the last couple of years of developing the game. And to help me do that, I wanna introduce you to Ben. Hi everyone, my name is Ben and I'm the lead designer on the Bazaar. We started with the deck having all attacks. They all just did one damage, they did it to whatever you targeted. It was a lot of inputs for a player to handle. It would be, you click on the card, so you have to click, and then you have to target. And for every card in their hand, they had to do this action. It was 10 inputs for the player to do, starting on their first turn of the game. And imagine, if it's your first game playing the Bazaar, and you draw five cards, and each of these five cards has that many decisions behind it. You have to read them, understand what they do, and then you have to basically decide, is it better to attack this, attack this, attack this? Do I spend three here, two here? What's the, what's the split? It's very confusing for a new player. It's too many options. And most importantly, it's just too many inputs. You know, we're more experienced in the game than anybody, and even to us it felt tedious to have to manually drag out five cards a turn. And a lot of you guys correctly identified this problem in the YouTube comments before, um, and it's something we wanted to fix, basically. So we started looking at ways to reduce inputs per turn. Our natural reaction to this problem was, let's just turn all the starting cards into coins. That's like Dominion and Ascension. You just play them, and then they give you money to spend. This way, you don't have to pick any targets, which we thought would make it a lot easier to play. So instead of having to pick what you target, you just drag it forward and play it. That way it's basically five inputs. You don't have to know what you're targeting, you just have to drag it forward. But it still just felt tedious after you knew what you were doing. If you already knew what you were doing and you knew the game really well, you still had to click and drag five coins out on every turn. So the tedium was still there. The problem with our game a year ago is that it started complicated. It started with a lot of inputs. It started with a lot of decision making. I and mean, I thought that was a good thing out of the gate, but uh, you know, in reality, I think it does just make the game a little exhausting to play. So we wanted to fix this. Another option we decided to test was having the coins autoplay. They just play themselves. So as soon as they move to your hand, then they would move forward. And this would make it so you don't have to do an input. You just see the coin get played. This would reduce the inputs for a starting hand to zero. The player wouldn't have to do anything. The game was a lot harder to follow with auto-playing coins because you'd have to keep track of a card being played for you, which, while it seems like it's good because you don't have to actually play it, it's bad because you have to keep track of it still. And on top of that, it made it unclear how many cards you were drawing each turn. So at the start of the game, you would draw five and they would all play and you'd have no cards left in your hand. But some turns later in the game, you would get four coins and then one card that you'd purchased and then the coins would all play themselves and you'd have one card in your hand. So at the start of your turn, you wouldn't always have the same number of cards. In a regular deck building game, you would always have five. But because our cards were playing themselves, you'd have different numbers. You'd have one one turn, next turn you'd have two that stayed in your hand because they weren't coins. It was just inconsistent. And this inconsistency, we thought it was confusing. And we didn't really like any of these solutions. Auto playing the coins just felt really sloppy and it was hard to follow what's going on in the game because there was just a constant, it was like fireworks going off, just a constant shower of coins. It feels like you're drawing a random amount of cards every turn because like your non-coin cards would stay in your hand, right? So like 
turn five, you'd draw one non-coin card. It felt like you drew one real card. And then the next turn, you'd have three. The next turn, you'd have two. And it was very, like, just hard to follow uh, with the auto-playing coins. Another option that we talked about was making a play all button. Just one little button up here that would play all your coins. And you'd click it, and then automatically all of these would go forward and be played. If we made this button, it would lose a lot of functionality, actually, because a lot of times you would want to play some cards by something uh, that might transform a card in your hand or affect something about your hand. Maybe you draw more cards, and you don't want to have to play all your coins always. You might want to save some of them. We don't like the play all button just because adding buttons to the user interface is like... I, <laughs> I'm very, very against it. Almost every single decision that we've made in game design that's gotten approved is like, when we remove something. You know, after talking to a lot of game designers more experienced than me, the minimalist approach is the way to go. And you know, that's what we're trying to do. We felt like there was just significant problems with every solution we tested, and we couldn't make the coins feel good to play with. So we zoomed out a bit, and we had a conversation about why our ideas weren't working. And we thought, what if we just removed all the coins? So the next thing we tested was the game without a starting deck. There were a couple other decisions we made around this time, the, the biggest being that we decided all cards should probably cost the same amount to buy. The game felt like it was less about identifying the effects that you want for your strategy, and it became more about which of these three cards is strongest in a vacuum because it's cost effective. Um, and we just felt like that was less fun. So basically, we standardized the cost of cards across the game, we balanced them out so they're all roughly equal power level, and it makes the focus for the player on the effect of the card, what the card does. And I really think when that's the focus of the game, it's, it's at its most fun. So we gave them an income to compensate for the loss of this money. So we would give them something like $1 per turn. And they would use this to buy a card each turn. So the income was how they would get cards. And one by one, the cards would be added to their deck. Now, we kept this gameplay loop. We kept it where they would go to the discard pile after being played, and then reshuffled into the draw pile, and then drawn back to their hand. Now, because there was so few cards, instead of five cards per turn, we had them drawing one per turn, and they would keep the cards in their hand. So, we basically had a deck building game without starting decks. You'd just buy one card, and that would be your deck. You'd buy your first card, play it, and go to your discard, it would reshuffle, and then you'd draw it again. This solved all the problems we had with the coins. It didn't feel confusing to play with for the reasons the coins did, but it did feel confusing to play with uh, because this reshuffling pattern is just not natural. We got rid of the starting decks, and we had players just playing a traditional deck building game with no starting cards and automated money. And this solved all the problems we were trying to solve with the whole escalating complexity and all that, uh, but it, you know, it came with its own drawbacks. First of all, the game still had like a deck and a discard pile, even though there were no starting cards in there. Meaning that this was empty at the start of the game, and on turn one, I buy one card, and on turn two, what happens? I see this card that I bought, do a weird shuffle animation, fly across the screen, go to my deck for some reason, and then get drawn. And then I play it, I buy a second card, and now these two cards get shuffled into my deck, and they get drawn. It's just a very, it's weird why the cards are flying across the corners of the screen when there was nothing here to begin with. Uh, it's just very unintuitive to players that aren't already deck building game fans why it is that your cards are shuffling between these two zones for, for no reason effectively. It didn't even look like a deck until like halfway through the game when you actually had like 10 cards and cards started to pile up here. But before that, it would just feel really weird to anyone who's not familiar with deck building games already. And if you have multiple cards, a lot of the times you would be incentivized to play your best card. So if this was your best card, you would play it, and then next turn you would get to redraw it if it was your only card in your discard pile. So you were encouraged to not play your cards. You were encouraged to only play your best one so that you could redraw it. We really didn't like that. We really wanted people to play their cards and feel good about playing each card. You shouldn't feel bad because you played a bad card. Deleting it completely had a lot of problems. And what we tried doing next is basically just making one pile, combining the two piles into just a bag. And the idea was, well, what if there's, uh, you know, this, this red icon. Let's just pretend this is a bag icon. When you buy a card, it just flies in here. And 
eventually it'll say like, oh, you, you own 10 cards in your bag. And you would just draw cards from your bag at random. <laughs> we, we thought this would simplify it, and in some ways it was more intuitive. Um, and it cleaned up the UI a little bit, but it had its own issues, you know? You, you had no guarantee that you were gonna draw your best card ever. You could theoretically draw all of the bad cards repeatedly out of the bag. This phase of our testing was really short because it just did not feel good to play with. You had control still over what was in your discard pile. You'd only want to play the good cards so that you could redraw them. We didn't really love that solution either of combining the two zones. Uh, so we decided, well, you know, what if we just deleted the decks, period? What if instead of having these starting cards that are so hard to balance input-wise, and what if we just deleted them from the game completely? Uh, and we replaced the board, or the hand rather, with essentially just a space that you buy cards and, and drag them onto. Every iteration so far with draw piles and discard piles just felt outdated to us. We, we didn't like how they felt to play. We wanted to try and make the game not have these. We wanted to see if it could be done, where all the cards that you pick just stay in front of you, and that's it. Now, if all the cards stay in front of you, the very obvious problem is this is going to be a lot of cards. The list is just going to keep going and getting longer, and you can't display that much information on a screen. We had to stop boards from growing indefinitely. In Hearthstone, this happens because minions die. So we thought we would put a durability counter on each card. It would be a number that shows how many times the item can be used. And after that number of uses, the item would break. This way, we can let you play cards directly in front of you, but not run into the problem of having infinite line of cards that you have to keep track of. At this point, there was nothing that really made these card-like. They didn't have a draw pile. You didn't draw anything. So we started calling them items, and we used these words interchangeably. Having durabilities on the items was really helpful to make the game more interactive, because now opponent can have a card that just directly targets yours and makes it lower its durability by a number. This could lose two durability and go to three. This could lose three and go to one. We could directly let you interact with their cards, and we could make defensive tools to help you defend your cards and the game became significantly more fun immediately. We suddenly had all the strengths of a deck building game where you're building a unique strategy every game from the ground up, you're finding things with synergy, you're, you're trying to get an advantage, you're building a, a custom strategy every single time that nobody's built. We had those strengths, but we didn't have any of the drawbacks. We also had escalating complexity the way that we hoped to, the way that Hearthstone and Magic do, and we really feel like this made the game significantly better, but I know that this may disappoint some of you because I know that a lot of you guys are very bought into the idea of us making uh, a digital deck building game. And you know, for two years, that is what it was, that is, that is what we tried to do, but we honestly believe that to make the best game we can make, we have to fix that mechanic because it's archaic, it's outdated, and the only reason to keep it is uh, like stubbornness and nostalgia for deck builders. So now that you see the whole journey of how we got here, I hope you understand why there's no decks in our deck building game anymore. There was a lot of problems. It's a really outdated system and we think to make the best game that we can, we just had to get rid of them. In paper, where you physically need to create randomness with your hands, Cards are a phenomenal way to do it. Decks, discard piles, works great for those deck builders. We think we can just make a better game by moving cards to hand directly instead of to the deck first. So uh, I wanted to tell you guys about this change sooner rather than later. I hope the explanation made sense. Thank you for watching our first update video here on uh, the Bizarre YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked it. I hope you sub, follow, uh, be nice to Ben, all right, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.